Pro Football Hall of Famer Mel Renfro with us tonight. The new book is Forever a Cowboy, an authorized biography written by uh, Bob Gill, one of the great cowboys in history, of course, member of the Ring of Honor as well. Great to have Mel back with us. Why did you decide to have this book written about your life uh, now? Well, actually, it wasn't my decision. You know, uh, Dr. Bob Gill followed my career, you know, from when I was in grade school up until the Hall of Fame and afterwards, and he felt like it should be written because of my accomplishments in grade school, high school, college, and of course the pros. He said, well, you know, you need your book written. So five years ago, he started writing it. And those accomplishments are, are, are just something. When you look back on your resume, uh, 1964 second round draft pick out of Oregon, uh, you, you had played uh, running back as well as defensive back at Oregon, but Tom Landry thought you were best suited to play defense. How, how'd you feel about that at first? Well, I, you know, I wanted to do what was best for the team at that time. Uh, of course, I, I, uh, I felt like I could have been a running back, but they had Amos Marsh and Don Perkins and uh, great wide receivers, Frank Clark. So, you know, I played defense well, but I had the opportunity to carry the ball because I was on punt, punt and kickoff returns. Uh, your first 10 seasons, uh, you made the Pro Bowl every year, uh, six as a free safety, four as a cornerback. As you were you know, looking back on your career for this book, is there anything in particular that kind of stuck out that you were most proud of? Well, uh, my high school career. Is that right? Just, yeah, just incredible. Uh, the games that I played and uh, the yards, uh, the touchdowns, the interceptions, uh, the, the wins, 34 and one in, in high school, uh, two state championships, one point away from a third state championship where on a play where I was clipped, and if I hadn't been clipped, we would have won the game. <laughs> and you never forget those kind of things, no, do you? No, you don't. All these years later. You're a great track and field athlete, too. So, could, you know, could have yeah. gone uh, the Olympics, could have gone that route. I love track, uh, high hurdles, low hurdles, uh, broad jump. Actually, in my senior year at Oregon, I was training for the decathlon, and uh, Bill Barman had me the shot put, the discus, the javelin, uh, long distance running you know, of course track wasn't paying much money in those days so uh, when the draft came along and I was offered money I decided not to do the decathlon thing. What was it like to be a member of the Cowboys during that era bef before they had become America's team so to speak and, and hadn't hadn't won championships yet when you got here in 64? Well we were we were building you know uh, Tom Landry uh, the team was growing uh, we're getting better. You know, my first year we had a losing season. My second year we were seven and seven. And Tom Landry educated us and taught us, you know, what it was going to take uh, to win, to be a winner. Uh, he told us uh, not to worry about uh, what he was telling us. Just do it. Just do what I tell you. If I tell you to go three steps this way and two steps that way, you, you might not understand it, but just do it. And uh, he was tough. Uh, we. Uh, Sometimes we didn't like him, but we obeyed him, and the results were we started winning. What do you remember most about the fact that you finally did win championships? You won two, two Super Bowls, you, you, you uh, won four uh, conference championships. Things got pretty good there for a while, didn't they? Well, Landry was always looking to the next play. He never worried about the last play. Uh, I remember one year during preseason, we won most of our preseason games. The last one, we won 43-7. to seven. But in the film session the next day, we thought we'd lost that game. And that's just the way he was. He stayed right on top of us and uh, made us believe that there's no losing. You know, we have to win and we have to play well. We have to do what we're supposed to do. So you make all these Pro Bowls, one of the great defensive backs of your era, but then you had to wait and wait and wait to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I think 17 years after you first became eligible. Uh, I remember talking to you during some of those years, but how difficult was that wait for you? It was tough. It was tough. I saw teammates of mine going in and guys I played against that didn't have my credentials. And uh, yeah, it was, it was tough. And I, I got a little bitter. Uh, but I sat down and talked with Bob Lilly one year and he says, Mel, he says, don't worry about it. You're going to go in. You know, it's no, uh, not a situation of if, it's just a matter of when. You also write in this book, or it's written about, you know, adjustments to life after football. What, what, what was the toughest thing for you to get used to after your pro football career had completed? Well, it was tough because all I knew was football and sports. And uh, I wanted to stay in sports. Uh, I, I scouted for a year with the Cowboys. 
I coached with the St. Louis Cardinals for a couple of years and I just didn't catch on. So, you know, I tried different business experiences that just didn't seem to work. Uh, but, you know, in, in the long run, I think that I'm pretty satisfied with my successes. I had some failures, but I'm sa satisfied with my successes. And, you know, I'm now retired and, 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 and mostly work with uh, charities and things of that nature. And of course, I've got a memorabilia store. And, you know, there's so much in the news about the physical toll that, that the game takes on, on players. Uh, what has been the biggest effect on you physically from all your years well, playing yeah, football? Don't, don't get me started on that. My, my <laughs> wife gets on me all the time and I'm always complaining. You know, I, start, I told a guy last night, I was in a meeting and I said, start with my toes and go right on up to my head. I mean, everything hurts. Peripheral neuropathy, spinal stenosis, carpal tunnel, uh, vertebrae, uh, arthritis and uh, uh, but you know it's part of what happens when you play that game it's a collision sport so you got to expect it but I wouldn't give up any of it for anything not to harp on it but how about the concussions I know you had many throughout the course of your career as, as many players did during your era many of them mm -hmm. undiagnosed the effects from that well there's a lot of talk about this CTE well I've got CRI uh, or CRS and I can't remember stuff. <laughs> okay. uh, other than the pain, you know, I have uh, some memory problems. But other than that, uh, uh, I'm doing okay. But there is, uh, I think, a serious issue. I mean, I've seen the movie Concussion, and it really hit my heart hard that uh, a what, what a lot of guys are going through. And, you know, the league has to be more conscious of these situations and help those players that need help. You had a son uh, just coming up starting to get into the age where he'd start football now, would you encourage him or discourage him from playing the game? I would definitely uh, discourage him because I just wouldn't want, uh, you know, any child, especially my own, to have to go through, you know, what I'm going through now. Although, like I say, I, I wouldn't change it, but it's not worth it. Mel Renfro, uh, one of the, the great Cowboys, one of the classiest Cowboys in the history of the franchise, a Hall of Famer, Ring of Honor member, and uh, the book on his life is called Forever a Cowboy. It's available at Amazon.com, and uh, we thank Mel Renfro so much for his time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. All right. I'm Mike Ducey, Fox 4 Sports.